Hey guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing fantastic. Today is a great day, because today we finally get to take a look at some of Meta's prototypes, things that they have been working on behind the scenes that we have not seen to date. And let me tell you, some of you may have already had a glimpse at these, and if you have, you know that these things are super futuristic and could change the course of how VR works when they are fully released. However, for now, they are just prototypes, so it's not like we actually have our hands on them. I don't know about you, I'm super excited. So, without any further ado, as usual, let's get right into it. So, a few days ago, Meta released a short little clip about all of the new prototypes it has been working on. And in those prototypes, we also have something that looks a little bit like the Meta Cambria. It wasn't referred to as Cambria, and it seems to be connected to PC VR and working on the old rift sensors so i'm going to go ahead and say that it is probably not cambria it may have been what led to cambria but it's probably not cambria because it's not standalone i mean it can't be if it's using old rift sensors unless those are just for the controllers see there's a lot actually happening here and in case you guys are interested in longer videos in case you enjoy watching those i highly recommend adam savage just tested where they actually went and checked out these prototypes hands-on it's a fantastic video super informational but i'm gonna try cram all that down for you into 10 minutes today and let me tell you zuck was looking very human in that video mm, great cgi mm. but yes meta has been working on some really cool prototypes very focal lenses allowing you to actually properly focus hdr super high resolution retina displays all the good stuff and they're trying to fit all of that into a really small form factor. Oh, also their naming schemes are absolutely hilarious. I mean, butterscotch reminds me of ice cream sandwich back in Android. So let's hop right into the first article. Meta is building a prototype headset called Mirror Lake to prove out nearly all of the advanced visual technologies that we've been incubating over the past seven years in a compact, small form factor. So this definitely seems to look like Cambria, but let me assure you that Cambria will not have all of these technologies. These are still a while away, and I mean, fitting all of that into a small form factor is going to be incredibly difficult. Mirror Lake hasn't yet been built into a functional device. It's still a concept being actively worked on. Chief scientist of Meta Reality Labs division, Michael Abrash, said Mirror Lake shows what a complete next generation display system could look like. Many people are saying that the headsets we currently have aren't really next generation. They're more like 1.2s or 1.4s or just kind of fractions of next generations. None of them have absolutely blown anyone out of the water with insane FOV or insane resolution. Sure, they've all been better and they've all been really good, but really nothing has improved to the point where someone would call it next generation. I mean, standalone, actually, but even some people would say standalone has actually been more of a 1.2, because while it has been fully wireless, it hasn't been an update in resolution, and there's a limit as to what you can actually process on it. The concept is designed to achieve a ski goggles form factor. Again, something that is already quite difficult with today's tech. Try cramming all of this tech into it. Variofocal. All current VR headsets outside of lab prototypes have fixed focus lenses, meaning you are focused on a singular display directly in front of you and it's fixed focus. Each eye gets a separate image, but the images are focused at a fixed distance. Your eyes will point, converge, or diverge towards a virtual object that you're looking at, but can't properly focus accommodate to this distance. This is called the vergence accommodation conflict. It causes eye strain and can make virtual objects look blurry close up. We've actually talked about this. I have one of my favorite videos I ever made on this channel where I got invited to go to Switzerland to check out a company called Serial. In case you want to watch that video, it's right up here. They were working on light field technology, technology that essentially removed that eye strain and made everything look real. One is to one exactly how we see it in the real world. Well, Meta is taking a different approach to this by using variofocal lenses. They already revealed this at their F8 conference in 2018, where Facebook showed off a prototype headset called the Half Dome, which incorporated eye tracking to mechanically move the displays forwards or backwards to adjust its focus. However, in Connect 6 in 2019, Meta described Half Dome 2 and Half Dome 3. Half Dome 3 being their latest iteration, where instead of a moving 
moving display, they used a stack of liquid crystal lens layers, applying a voltage to each lens layer, and that changed its focal length. So each unique combination of on or off results in different focus distances. With six layers, there are 64 different possible focus distances. You can see there's a lot of different ways to achieve different focus distance inside VR. It's just a matter of meta finding the slimmest possible way of doing so, as I feel like that's what they're going for. Form factor. It's very important when you're sitting inside VR for the longest time to have a nice form factor that won't drag down on your face, plus also, you know, focus distances, eye strain, things like that. The more of that they can minimize, the more people are going to be interested. Hollow cake lenses. Popular current VR headsets, including the Quest 2, PlayStation VR, and the Valve Index, use regular refractive lenses, which necessitate a relatively large display panel and a large gap between it and lens. The gap is the primary driver for the size and the bulk of today's headsets. Of course, you can't put a display here and a lens right here. It's just, it wouldn't work. I mean, did you ever try that with a magnifying glass? Nothing happens. So, you know, you kind of need to have that distance, which is why today's headsets are so bulky. However, then we have pancake lenses, where the optical path is short enough that most of the remaining thickness is the lens itself. To reduce the size of headsets even further, Meta's researchers kept the same core concept of pancake optics, polarization-based optical folding, but replaced the curved lens with a thin, flat holographic lens, building on the research they showed off in 2020. Meta calls this hollow cake lenses. To add to that, it actually becomes cooler, because if you're wearing glasses, you're going to really love this. Meta says a very thin prescription attachment could be added to the hollow cake lenses for those with reduced vision, eliminating the need to wear glasses inside the headset. Something, you know, I'm a big fan of as I need to wear these, I'm short-sighted, and in VR, these can be a pain. I have prescription lenses inside VR, but they actually kind of increase the thickness, so I need to use the thicker pad on my interface in order to move my eyes further away from the lenses. It's kind of a pain, and a really thin film would be amazing here. The Reverse pass-through is also something they're working on. It's actually hilarious and looks really funny. You know, when you're wearing your headset, people can't see you. And reverse pass-through would allow those people to see your eyes, see where you're looking, see if you're looking at them, maybe. Well, actually, no, because you'd be looking at the display. I don't even know if this is necessarily 100% important, but uh, it is kind of cool, you have to say. It looks really futuristic. Now let's move on to some of the other prototypes. Really high resolution, retina displays, and ultra-high HDR prototype. Meta presented two more prototype headsets each solving a different aspect of its goal to make VR indistinguishable from reality. Butterscotch. See, here we go. The Retina Resolution Headset. Retina is a term often used to describe angular resolution, which at least matches that of the human eye. The generally accepted threshold is 60 pixels per degree. No consumer VR headset yet comes close to this. The Quest 2 only reaches 20 pixels per degree, so that tells you how far more we need to come in order to reach human eye resolution. The Vario Aero reaches 35 pixels per degree, and Vario's $5,500 business-focused headset headsets surpass retinal's resolution, but only in a tiny area at the center of your view. Butterscotch is a research prototype, achieving 55 pixels per degree. Achieving this required more than just a high-resolution display. Meta says it developed a new hybrid lens system that would fully resolve the higher resolution. But if you look at these eye graphs, which is actually something I myself am quite familiar with, you can see how absolutely incredible the resolution is on this. It would allow you to read even the lowest line of letters and numbers on one of these eye graphs. It is absolutely incredible and would boost immersion inside VR by a ton. Let's move on to Starburst, another really funny name. Ultra Bright HDR. HDR content, of course, is something that is beautiful. It's beautiful, but sometimes, according to me, it can look less realistic. I mean, I have a HDR TV right here, I have a HDR TV downstairs, and while it looks beautiful, if you ask me, it looks better than real life, which is slightly concerning. Starburst is a prototype headset demonstrating extremely bright displays with high dynamic range. Zuckerberg described bright HDR as arguably the most important dimension of all for achieving VR indistinguishable from 
reality. Starburst is bulky, heavy, and tethered. Zuckerberg admitted it would be wildly impractical to ship in a product. We're using it to test and for future studies so that we can get a sense of what the experience feels like. The only other known headset with HDR displays is the PlayStation VR 2, but Sony hasn't yet revealed the headset's brightness. What my phone actually does when you play HDR content is the screen actually just brightens down and turns green for some reason. I'm almost certain that's a bug with something I broke when I custom ROMed it, but or at least on this phone. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to get ultra bright HDR, which would be absolutely beautiful, but better than reality, which is concerning. And talking about better than reality, Zuckerberg wants VR headsets to pass the virtual touring or Turing test. It's really creepy. Uh, the Turing test was originally something where you would see if a machine can be indistinguishable from a human when it comes to text based conversations. It's really Really creepy, but Zuckerberg wants that to happen with virtual reality as well. When you put on a VR headset, can you distinguish it from real life? It is very, very creepy, and I think once we get to that stage, a lot of people will just refuse to live in the real world and live in virtual reality, which I actually, even though I'm a huge fan of VR, I, I'm not all in for that. I actually enjoy living in the real world, and uh, I enjoy that human interaction, and while VR can replace that, I well, actually, we might get to the point where it's indistinguishable, and what am I going to say then? Either way, tell me your opinion on that down below. Meta's leaders aim to make VR headsets so advanced people wearing them can't tell whether they're looking at real or virtual reality. That's the comment from Meta's chief scientist, Michael Abrash, who recently joined CEO Mark Zuckerberg and some of the company's top researchers from a video briefing with journalists led by Zuckerberg. The researchers detailed a series of prototypes developed over the last decade while making clear that their aim is to eventually pass what they call the visual Turing test. Yeah, so uh, there you go. We're reaching the point where we're going to have a visual Turing test, and I'm not sure how much I agree with that. But do let me know your opinions on all of these headsets down below. I am super happy that we got to take a look at these and while not everybody might love meta and what they do and sure they have some questionable practices you must say they are absolutely pioneering in this industry they are making technologies that don't exist yet and they are working hard and what they are making technologically wise is beautiful i mean the technology is moving along and that's what i personally I'm looking at here. I'm looking at the technology they're working at rather than Meta as a company. And I think it's incredible. I think it's amazing. And the evolution of technology here is just, it's evolving at such a rapid pace. It is mind blown. So let me know what you think about all of these headsets down below. Which technology do you think is the most important in virtual reality? If you guys like this video, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too. But do tell me why down in the comment section below. Thank you so much to the Patreon supporting this channel. You guys help me out a ton paying my bills paying my subscriptions and overall making these videos better if you guys want to support the channel that patreon is down below we also sell merch down there and there's that youtube uh, thank button or something underneath this video and thank you so much to everyone that does so join our discord join our reddit where i want to see you posting your spicy memes and as usual in case you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead ding my bell see you again in the next video peace it's actually really hot in here today i am sorry if i'm sweating but it is I don't know, maybe it's the Naz. The Naz is doing some stuff. Uh, peace. <laughs>